what is good youtube and welcome back to a brand new video real quick guys if you could smash that subscribe button if you haven't already make sure to do that uh we're trying to get to 3,000 subscribers and as soon as we reach 3,000, a giveaway is coming you have to be subscribed in order to be in it but today we're going to be doing a nets realistic rebuild and uh there is a little bit of a challenge to it i guess you could say and this idea, well, I don't know if you could really call it, well, I mean, yeah, it's kind of an idea, but Ali Akbar, I think, I, Ali Akbar, Al Akbar, okay, Al Akbar says, uh, do a Brooklyn Nets rebuild, but keep their young core, so what that means is, let me try to find the previous comment, Tra must keep D'Lo, Spencer, Allen, Levert, and Harris, so um, uh, that's five players I gotta keep, which it's not a big deal. The only one I really have a problem with is D'Andre Russell because he warrants a lot of money in the offseason. And uh, we already have Spencer Dinwiddie locked up. Or the Nets have locked up Spencer Dinwiddie. Who knows if the Nets will actually bring back Dinwiddie or Russell after the season or not. But we're going to just, I guess, go with the flow. But we got to keep Levert, Jared Allen, Joe Harris. So basically, they're top players he wants me to keep. And then everyone else, uh, I guess he doesn't really care necessarily about. So uh, we will try to do that. We'll see how it works out. But the Nets have been on a hot streak here lately. They've won their last uh, three games against the Rockets, the Magic, and even the Celtics. It's uh, The Nets are looking pretty damn good, and they are on to a pretty nice future. So we got DeAndre Russell right now. I'm going to fix this rotation. Karis LeVert, I don't know when he's supposed to be back. So maybe I'll just leave it actually how it is right now because I think Karis LeVert's supposed to return soon, but I don't know when. I really don't like the idea of this guy starting though, but I kind of I kind of want to keep it the same. Rondé Hollis Jefferson is a six man over Dinwiddie. Dinwiddie, there's no way Dinwiddie's just getting 21 minutes a game, right? I I mean that's kind of absurd. He's closing. I know he's closing for sure. Uh, I know Russell and Dinwiddie both close. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this. Let me rebuild these rotations. So we got Russell, Karis LeVert, Demar Carroll, Kenneth Fareed. Actually, Fareed was actually just our or is getting bought out by the Brooklyn Nets. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that uh, just for realistic purposes. Um, buying him out, I guess he's going to go to the Houston Rockets. Or I could have, what I could have done is just traded him to the Houston Rockets, I guess. But uh, yeah, that's cool. So buying him out and then the uh, the Rockets are going to pick him up anyway. So Spencer, Dan Russell, Spencer Dinwiddie, uh, Chris Levert. Um, like I said. Now that uh, he's gone, Hall Shefferson is going to start. So I'm just going to leave it how it is right now. I like this rotation. I'm just going to leave it like this. And I'm going to go and simulate to the end of the season. Like I said, I'm not sure when Karis LeVert is going to come back. But uh, I, sh I think it should be soon. But extensions. Ed Davis, Mark Carroll want to come back. I don't want either of them. Alan Crabb on a terrible contract. But uh, we're going to go and just simulate to the end of the season. At the trade deadline to escape Alan Crabb's massive contract coming this offseason, we're going to go ahead and trade Rondé Hollis Jefferson, attach him. Uh, he's going to be a free agent as well, probably going to warrant a lot of money. 76 overall, can't shoot the three ball. I'm not really necessarily interested in him as my future power forward. So I'm going to go ahead and trade him to the Kings. Get rid of Alan Crabb's massive contract for next season off our books because he's definitely going to accept his player option. There's no way he wouldn't. That is a ton of money for Alan Crabb to just leave on the table. So. Iman Shepard, Yogi Ferrell, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, the Kings get Rondell Jefferson and a nice shooter off the bench. So, And uh, they're just trading a one-year deal in Iman. And Yogi Ferrell is just a you know decent backup point guard. So 13-26 uh, so far on the season, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep simulating. So as the Brooklyn Nets make strides, we are 41-41. and Finally in the playoffs. Back at the playoffs facing the Toronto Raptors in the first round, which you know isn't a great first round matchup. But... Deandre Russell averaged 21 points per game. Dinwiddie had 16 and 5. Uh, Karis Levert with 16 as well. Jared Allen with 12. And Joe Harris with 11. So, guys, I do have a... I just don't know what I'm going to do about Deandre Russell yet. I know that guy wants me to keep him. But, like, part of me does not want to keep him. Because I have Dinwiddie, Levert already. And Russell is going to want a lot of money. And I just don't know if I'm... Oh, my gosh. We're actually giving the Raptors a series, like, 3-2. Okay. That is great. Like, the Brooklyn Nets literally just took the Raptors to six games. I was not expecting that. As an eighth seed, that's how you know the Nets are on for a bright future. That is great. They just took the best team in the East to six games in a series. That's awesome. So, I'm very happy with the way this team is going so far. Obviously, I haven't done anything yet. But, 
I'm very happy for the Brooklyn Nets. They deserve, and the Nets fans, they deserve uh, some good things happening to them coming soon. Because, I mean, they've been suffering ever since that trade with uh, Billy King as their GM. So, I mean, I think we all know what it was. I don't need to say it. But, anyway, League Meeting, let's go ahead and reject all of these. Uh, we don't need any of those to be on or anything. Alright, so we should have like the 15th pick or something, hopefully. Uh, we have the, our 16th pick. I'll take it. Um, I don't know if we could possibly trade up in the draft to uh, Kenny Atkinson. I do like Kenny Atkinson as a coach in real life. His ratings down here aren't great, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and keep him just because I do like him in real life. So I'm going to go ahead and skip to the draft. We have the 16th pick. I mean, the Nets should be rel and the 15th pick from the Nuggets. The Nets should be relishing because they finally have a draft pick. Okay. Other than that, um, obviously, I don't know. If I could possibly package these picks to move up into the lottery, maybe. That would be cool if I could. Uh, like, tr maybe trade for the 10th pick or something. Uh, I'm going to try to do that. So, we're going to try to move up in the draft. So, let me see if I can even do that. Um, who has, like, the... The Celtics have, like, the ninth pick from the Kings. Um, out, or the 7th pick from the Heat. What is, so, let's try this. So, 6th. This pick. Or the 7th pick. You're asking me to give up away a valuable asset. Okay, what if I gave you the this guy? Karooks. Is this guy? No, actually, he's pretty cheap, and he could be good one day. Um, if I gave you Lavert. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Joe Harris. We got Ed Davis still on a contract. Musa. So, six nine. he is six nine, and he's a shooting guard? Come on now. He is, uh, he could be playing power forward. Um, maybe I'd have to trade, like, the second round pick as well. They still don't want to do it. How about I give you, like, a top 10 protected pick next year? Okay, they agree. So, second round, all three of my picks in a top 10 protected Brooklyn Nets pick next year. So, uh, if we are in the lottery, we will get our pick back, hopefully. So, the NBA draft, now we have the seventh pick. So, let's go ahead and get somebody out here. So, the seventh pick. I'm not sure what I would want, but like I said, I wanted to move up in the draft to try to get somebody, add some talent to this team while not paying up too much. Garland, Kevin Porter Jr., Jamorant, uh, RJ Barrett, you know who I see that hasn't been taken yet? And that is Cameron Reddish. If he is still on the board, I might have to take him. So Cameron Reddish or Bol Bol is here, or Nasir Little. Uh, who else? Is, uh, what's his face here as well? Keldon Johnson's here. Who's the other guy that everybody talks about? I forgot. Jamorant. Or is he in the... Oh, yes, he did. Ja Jamorant. He's already taken. Okay. Cameron Reddish, obviously, I think is the, the pick here. No-brainer. 19 years of age. From Kentucky. Or not from Kentucky. Duke. Right? Duke. Yes. Okay. That's what I thought. I don't pay attention much to college hoops. So, Duke, get Cameron Reddish. Let's go. That is a great start to this offseason, I believe. So, Cameron Reddish... At a uh, 79 overall, love that addition to the team. Welcome to the team, Cameron Reddish. Karis LeVert, Jared Allen, Shabazz Napier. I'm going to go ahead and bring all these guys back. And then Yogi Ferrell and Trayvon Graham, no need to bring them back. But like the idea of bringing everybody else back. Qualifying offers, Allen Williams. Uh, um, He is a 78 overall, but we do have Ed Davis already. Obviously, DeAndre Russell, got to give him his qualifying offer. I don't know if we're going to match anything yet, but we're going to wait and see how it looks. So we have negative $10 million in cap space, but watch this. So Darren Williams is still getting paid, unfortunately. But once I uh, go ahead and wave all these contracts away, negative 3.60. Jared Dudley's contract, $9.3 million. Iman Shepard's contract is gone now. And now... Damari Carroll's contract is gone now. 14 million in cast space, or 48 million, and 14 million if we wanted to renounce D'Angelo Russell, but I won't for now anyway. Um, I'm gonna try my best to keep him, but I don't know, guys. We'll have to wait and see. So we have uh, Spencer Dinwiddie, Shabazz Napier, Karis LeVert, Cameron Reddish. Might end up moving him to the small forward because he is 6'8, and I uh, obviously want to start Karis LeVert. So Cameron Reddish, small forward, still stays the same. Sharpshooter, let's do it. All right. So, Spencer Dinwiddie, then we got Cameron Reddish, Joe Harris at the small forward already, Karooks uh, is here, and then um, and that other guy is a shooting guard. So, um, what does he go at to a small forward? 
Okay, I was about to say, because there's no way he's not that, like, he's a 77 overall at the small forward position. So, going to go ahead and move him there. He could easily play some power forward, 6'9". I might let him play the power forward. I think he can shoot the three ball. So, let me see real quick. What is his three ball looking like? Um, a B minus. Yeah, definitely could be my power forward, 6'9". Not opposed to that. So, uh, Dinwiddie, like I said, uh, Cameron Reddish. Uh, we have a lot of cast space and uh, we have a lot of spots already full. So, I mean, it's going to be interesting what we want to do. Uh, like I said, the point guard position, I don't mind Spencer Dinwiddie come off the bench. Curtis Avert, would love him to start, but like I said, not opposed to. And then a small forward. We'll have to wait and see. We'll just have to wait and see what we're going to do. So, I guess we have all the money in the world, so we can just go for best available here. Obviously, Kevin Durant for Brooklyn um, is a possibility, but I'm not sure I want to do that. Kyrie Irving got him in yesterday's Suns video gonna try to stay away from that although there was some rumors about Kyrie in Brooklyn a long time ago but Kyrie has said he's gonna resign with the Celtics Cousins uh, he just I don't know man he's just trying to make himself look like a villain uh, in today's NBA Jimmy Buck Butler um, could be interesting but I don't like him just because there are some lot of rumors about him being a cancer in the locker room Tobias Harris at the power forward. I'm not opposed to that. I think I like that a lot. 27 years of old, 27 years of age. I could bring him in and then have um, Dendra Russell back as well. I'm actually liking that plan a lot more than anything. So we're going to pay up Tobias Harris to Brooklyn. I think that works, right? I think that works. Though. Okay, I'm not going to give him a no trade clause, obviously. So Tobias Harris. Okay, we do get him. I thought uh, for a second, I thought... Uh, he uh, declined, or he went somewhere else. So, Tobias Harris, Alan Williams is prepared to accept an offer from the Trailblazers. You'll be given the opportunity to match the contract. And then DeAndre Russell is prepared to accept. So, DeAndre Russell is getting a four-year, $110 million deal. Alan Williams is getting a two-year, $8 million deal from the Brooklyn, or from the Trailblazers. He is 6'8", and he's a center. Wow. Uh, power forward center. Um, I'm going to go ahead and decline that one. But DeAndre Russell and Tobias Harris, definitely want to bring both of those guys back. Or not both of them back, but we're going to go ahead and sign Tobias Harris in here and get DeAndre Russell back on the team. So I'm sure uh, you guys are happy or you are happy about that. The one that wanted me to keep him. I wasn't going to, but you know what? Why not? So 25 mil or how much money do we have left? We still have 16 mil in cash space to deal with. I'm going to go ahead and leave that open. I'm probably not going to sign anyone else. I think we kind of have a full roster as it is. Got a lot of guards. Shabazz Napier. Um, a lot of players I could potentially trade as well. Karis LeVert will still start at the shooting guard, which is a good thing. And then Tobias Harris has got the power forward position. And then Musa is going to get some power forward minutes. So I'll tell you that. Uh, but Jared Allen, Ed Davis, of course, going to just leave them in the center. So hope you guys did enjoy that real quick offseason. I'm going to go ahead and simulate to the end of next season where this team should be back in the playoffs, I would think, but you never know. All right, guys, so we're in the offseason, and as you can tell, our pick is in the lottery, and it's projected the number one pick. So, um, obviously, I think that we're going to get our pick back. Thank God I put protections on it, because if we didn't, we wouldn't have our pick. So, uh, Heat via Brooklyn, we have the chance to get the number one pick. Let's go ahead and see if we do. We actually get... Um, the second pick. Okay, I'm cool with that. So I get the second pick. That's fine with me. I honestly thought that uh, it became... I, I honestly thought the Heat got our pick for a second. I was like, what? What is going on? So we got the second pick in the draft. And uh, as much as I like uh, Kenny Atkinson, this team underperformed like crazy. 28 and 54. That is absolutely not good for what I put on this roster. So we're going to go ahead and hire a whole new head coach. Hopefully a new head coach could come in and... Uh, Maybe make this team a little bit better, but we'll see. But, I mean, like I said, I still have a lot of cap flexibility, a lot of stuff to do this offseason. So, just going to go ahead and give Michael Stauffer a contract. Assistant coach, uh, Otis Newman is fine with me. Let's go ahead and sign him. Assistant GM, Connor Green. Let's go ahead and sign him. Whoops. And then head scout, uh, B. Oh, wait, he's an assistant coach. Head scout. C, C, C. I guess this guy is the best to get. Let's go ahead and sign him. All right, sign him. All right, so now we got a whole new staff. 
for this Brooklyn Nets roster. So hopefully that helps out a little bit. Now for the second draft pick, I don't know if I want to go ahead and select somebody or I want to trade the pick. Um, we have some potential of trading this pick. Like maybe like uh, a Spitzer Dinwiddie for, in a second round pick. I'm just curious what this would, not a second round pick, in the second pick in the draft, I'm just curious what this would give me. So Zach Levine from the Bulls, RJ Barrett from the Cavaliers and Larry Nance, Chris Milton, the fifth pick in Josh Richardson, fourth pick in Chris Wilkes, Rudy Gobert. Um, yeah, those are some nice, um, we can move up and get the number one pick. That's kind of just retarded. So uh, yeah, I wasn't planning on trading Dinwiddie anyway. Um, Karuks is progressing really well, but what could I get? Uh, for him so I could get Zach Levine which that we already have plenty of cards honestly so I'm not sure if I'm, I'm down for that Andre Drummond like I said we can move up and get the number one pick but like I said it's really there's really no point of that so I'm just gonna go ahead and make a selection here I guess so let's go ahead and sim to the next user pick who did the Brooklyn Nets take they chose Isaiah Stewart so I'm gonna go ahead Anthony Edwards Jalen Jaden McDaniels Vernon Carey Jr., Brian Antoine, Cole Anthony. I honestly, guys, I don't even know who's good in this draft class. Jalen McDaniels, sharpshooter. I mean, maybe it doesn't make a lot of sense for me to take someone. I mean, the only thing... I have Jared Allen, and I took Cameron Reddish last, last year, so it really, honestly, does not make sense for me to take anybody. So maybe we go Ro Rodians, Karooks, go ahead and trade him. For, um, what do we got out here? Go Bear, uh, Jimmy Butler, Isaiah Stewart, and TJ Warren. Jimmy Butler, Go Bear, Chris Milton. Go Bear. Go Bear is intriguing to me. He's on a one year deal. Maybe the Jazz are kind of looking to rebuild now. You know what, guys? We're going to go ahead and do this. 28 years old. Nice veteran presence on the team. I want to make this team even better because we did underperform last year. To Rudy Gobert, I don't need Austin Rivers necessarily. But we'll get a uh, second pick and then we'll hope to re-sign Rudy Gobert, I guess. But like with a second round pick or the second draft pick, obviously if I'm the Nets in real life, I'm keeping this pick and I'm going to draft somebody to make my team even better. But the fact that I only have one more season left to make this team good... I'm gonna go ahead and make that uh, trade. So that's the only reason I did it. So, um, Jalen McDaniel, small forward. Like I said, I already had Cameron Reddish, so it didn't really make a lot of sense for me. And I have point guards, and I guess could have took James Wiseman, but I think it made more sense for me to get a veteran out there. So, team player options, Jarrett Allen, now could be the backup center. So that's good off the bench. Karis LeVert, obviously, we wanna bring him back if possible, but uh, and I know we got to bring Joe Harris back because I was part of the challenge kind of or what the guy wanted me to do anyway what my uh, the subscriber left for me to do so Joe Harris how much money do we have negative seven million in cap space obviously um, we got Gobert I don't know how good that makes us but Jared Allen I think uh, obviously is a quality starter I just kind of wanted to see what I could get out there. So Radish, and now that uh, Musa could get the small forward minutes as well with Cameron Radish, and then Tobias Harris, and uh, like I said, Rudy Gobert and Jarrett Allen. So hopefully bringing back uh, Joe Harris. Well, we don't even need to bring back Joe Harris, to be honest. I mean, we could. We could. Yeah, well, we will. Joe Harris, we more forwards, and then we can get uh, Karis LeVert back. So that's the goal here. Obviously, we really can't afford anyone else out here. So let me just go straight for my dudes I gotta get so point uh, small forwards Joe Harris obviously we want to bring you back and then shooting guards curse avert wants a ton of money but obviously we're gonna go ahead and sign him anyway so let's go ahead and sign both these guys back got our guys back and hopefully now that things have changed we have a new head coach new staff uh, Rudy Gobert has a veteran presence Tobias Harris and everybody else getting a little bit better hopefully that makes everything good. So Gobert up to an 80, or not Gobert. Gobert's a 90. You got DeAndre Russell in an 88. Tobias Harris, 87 with a nice three-point shot. Jerry Allen, 84. Like, this team is just getting better. So hopefully that leads to some wins. Well, I'm going to go ahead and see to the end of next season where hopefully we're in the playoffs. If not, it would be a disappointing ending to the video. So six man of the year goes to Jarrett Allen with 11 points and nine rebounds, two blocks, 60% from the field, 
and uh, if you can look in the top bottom right or not top the bottom right hand corner we've actually come to a disappointing ending of the video I'm not sure we'll be in the playoffs and we're not 39 and 43 uh, as you so let's see the standing so uh, honestly kind of disappointing we almost did make it uh, we needed to win one more game we would have been in which is kind of eh, it's, it's annoying I mean if you really look at this roster I think the Nets even though we didn't make the playoffs for the next two seasons that I rebuilt the team. I mean, I think this roster is obviously heading towards the right direction. I mean, look at this damn team. I mean, obviously this team is going to be good going forward. 2K simulations just sometimes just suck. I'm just sorry, but they do. 39 and 43, 18 and a half points for Daniel Russell, 18 for Tobias Harris, 12 points for Kyrgios Levert, Cameron Reddish, 12 points. So despite the disappointing ending, I hope you guys did enjoy the video. Make sure to leave a like if you did, and of course subscribe if you haven't already. That is one thing with my rebuilds, I will never um, like fake like I always did good. Like this is just reality that 2K gave me, like this is it. Like I'm going to end the video here because I give myself three seasons and regardless of the outcome I like to show it to you guys, but this is what happened. So thank you guys, but this is Crushables and I'm saying peace.